is, and when it's a positive in the bracket, you're moving left. You guys should remember this from last year. So really make sure when you're doing your unit guide, before you go into the more complicated assignments, that you really know all of your transformations by heart, because if you screw up on the easy stuff, it's going to be very complicated when you go move on to the new transformation. So horizontal shift left and horizontal shift right. When I'm writing the instruction, because this affects your x coordinates for horizontal shift and uh, horizontal expansions, they always affect your x coordinates. However, for this specific transformation, if it's a negative, you're going to uh, add. So we're going to add a positive number to my x coordinates. And if it's a positive inside the brackets, remember we're always talking about opposite, so you subtract inside the brackets. So you would either add or subtract to your x coordinates. The y coordinates do not change for horizontal transformation add and subtract to our y coordinates. Yep? The yes, whatever the h value is. So if it's a negative h value, you're actually going to add whatever that number is. Not add a negative number, just add the number. Okay. Very last transformations will be our vertical shift transformation. This is a lot easier because if it's a positive number, we're going to add. And if it's a negative number, we're going to subtract. But vertical shift, because we're talking about up and down, we're adding and subtracting to our y coordinates. Adding and subtracting to our y coordinates. Whenever you see a positive value, you have to write it's a vertical. You can't just tell me it's a vertical shift by that number. You have to tell me vertical shift up by whatever your k value is. And if it's a negative number, you're going to have a vertical shift down. Those are the easiest type of transformation. You'll remember from last year that H and K referred to our vertex. So whenever you have a, a quadratic function, you have to remember that your vertex is still going to be H, K. However, that only refers to uh, affects quadratic functions. Okay, so that's pulling on your knowledge from last year. Okay, so now let's string everything together for one example uh, so we can kind of see similar to what I was doing in the last question. So I'm going to write a transformation equation in the, on the board and you guys are going to tell me what each transformation refers to. Okay, so what really, really helps when you're trying to identify transformations, draw an arrow underneath each separate transformation so you're kind of aware of how many marks this particular question is going to be worth. Okay, so I'm going to start calling on people. What does the negative at the very start of the equation mean? What kind of reflection? Yep. <laughs> Uh, anyone else know the negative? What type of reflection? Reflection in the x-axis. Does everyone agree with that? Yes. So even though it deals with the y-coordinates, we call it a reflection in the x-axis. Okay. So one transformation down. What about the one-fifth? 
One over five, what does that refer to? We're talking about opposites. So my Q term. Make this a Q. Good. Good jobin. Horizontal. So we can call it a stretch or an expansion. But you can't just leave it at that. You have to tell me by one fifth. Okay, what about inside the brackets? And notice that it was already factored, so I didn't have to add to that. So what does the X plus 6 stand for? X plus 6. Any ideas? William, I think you have an idea. Moving. Yes, what direction? It's positive, and we want to think in terms of opposites. Yes. So a horizontal shift left by a factor of 6. And what about the very last transformation? The easiest one of them all. My K term, what does that refer to? Vivienne, you want to take a crack at it? Am I going up or down? Okay, good. Vertical shift up by four. So it doesn't matter if you're writing the in-class test or the test center test. There is going to be tons and tons of transformations. Identifying the transformations is the easy part. So don't confuse them. Really take the time to memorize them because after we do this, we now have to make a transformation table. Before I go to that last part, I want to run a couple of things, uh, go through a couple of examples with you. <coughs> so, if I have the example, over here, this is using the transformation equation. But sometimes you're going to be a, have, or you're going to have to identify transformations using the actual function that we're talking about. So either the reciprocal function, the square root function, or the quadratic function. So if you have an example like this, y is equal to the square root of, and this is really important, I want you all to write these examples down because these are the ones you're going to see on your test. So 4 minus x minus 5, like that. Okay, so you might think, oh, that seems simple enough, but what you have to always ask yourself is, is this function in the proper format? Does it follow kind of the way my transformation function goes? And for this particular example, the answer is no, because we have to kind of rearrange this. 4 minus x is the same thing as saying negative x minus 4, like that. And when we rewrite the function, now it's really easy to identify that this negative refers to a particular transformation. The inside refers to a particular transformation. The negative 5 refers to a particular transformation. So if you don't see brackets, you don't see negatives, you have to, it's up to you to kind of rearrange the equation so you are able to see the correct transformation. So first of all, this negative would refer to a reflection. Because it's not in front of the function, it's inside. Uh, it's actually a reflection in the y-axis. My x minus 4, that would be a horizontal shift right by 4. The negative 5 would refer to a vertical shift down by 5. And if you do not... Uh, rearrange, you're not going to be able to correctly identify the transformations. I want to do one more example of this so you really kind of get the idea. You're going to be memorizing five key points for every single graph. This one, I'm going to start off with negative 2. When x is equal to negative 2, y is going to be negative 2 squared, which is positive 4. When x is equal to negative 1, y is equal to negative 1 squared, positive 1. When x is equal to 0, y is equal to 0, 1, 1, positive 2, 4. So those are very simple to identify, the key points of my original function. Now, if I want to apply the transformation, 